Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh McKelvin. In nine days, New Hampshire voters will be headed to the polls for the primary election. One race that is generating some fireworks of late, and as a result of a lot of attention, the Republican race for governor. And we'll begin this morning with Manchester Mayor and candidate for governor, Ted Gazzis. Good to see you, sir. Good morning, Josh. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So we're primary is now on our doorstep. Your race is getting a little bit uh, contentious, especially with Chris Sununu. Uh, you put out an ad going after him. He called it a flat-out lie. Why is he wrong? Well, I can tell you, Josh, that this race is coming down to trust, leadership, and experience. I'm the only one in this race that has all three of those. I've shown it as mayor. And Chris Sununu is short on answers and long on rhetoric when it comes to Planned Parenthood, when it comes to Common Core. So again, it's just about his record and nothing more than that, because I like Chris and I think he's a good guy. Yeah, attention, attention's flared a little bit a few months ago, on filing day actually, when uh, Chris Sununu said that, you know what, when it comes to opioid crisis, there's a lack of leadership at the state and local level. And when you said local level, a lot of people appeared he was talking about you. Uh, that make you mad? Well, I can tell you that I invite Chris to, to take a look at a Wall Street article of three days ago, because they talk about safe stations here in the city of Manchester. And when you talk about the drug epidemic that we have, and you talk about police and fire, they're on the front lines. They're working real hard to make sure that we have everything that we can do to fight this epidemic. There's no question that people are dying. But I think that the new report that you saw that uh, came out just yesterday is the number of overdoses in the month of August are down. That's something because of safe stations, because the firemen are working, Hope for Recovery and Serenity Place is working, and Amber's Place is working. So I say, have you called the chief of police or have you called the chief at the fire station and asked them what was going on? No, he has not done any of that. And when you take an assault on this city, it's bad. Well, there's a lot of people out there who don't live in Manchester that look at the city and figure, you know, it's got city problems. How do you make the case that uh, the city is better off with you having been mayor rather than if someone else was running, running the city? Well, I can tell you, Josh, that uh, if you take a look at the FBI statistics, our crimes are down. We have police officers that are out there and making arrests on a lot of crimes that are out crimes there. Crimes are down com as compared to when? as compared to last year. You can talk to the chief about those statistics. Those aren't anything that I make up. Those are the statistics that I get from him. So I can tell you that their crime is down. And you know, when you talk about 16 shootings in three weeks, they caught that individual. That was a person that was a gang member and they got him off the street. So again, it's about capturing these people and getting them off the street and making sure that the citizens in this city are safe. And they're working on the Roberts crime, I can tell you, day and night. That's not something that they ever stop working on, and hopefully in the near future, we will find that they're going to go out and catch somebody. You brought up uh, uh, Planned Parenthood. Uh, again, Chris News has been criticized for voting for funding for it. Now, you're a pro-choice Republican, uh, but you say there's no Gosh, way you would ever I, I fund. I would never funding. use public funds or taxpayers' dollars to fund Planned Parenthood. But the bigger issue in this whole subject matter is that it was a $550,000 retroactive contract to pay employees. They had already been paid. We were just reimbursing Planned Parenthood. But the bigger problem with that is, is that it was from a line item in the budget that was in a deficit. How would anybody ever vote to do that? Now you talk about the numbers. Obviously, you are a numbers guy. Let's talk about your criticism of uh, Common Core. Your ad says he's in, in favor of it. But basically, that was because he approved a contract uh, to assess the scores underneath the uh, envelope of or the umbrella of Common Core. He That's also, exactly he also well, he also voted twice for the commissioner of the Department of Education, who was a big advocate of Common Core. He also just voted uh, recently for somebody that uh, didn't support the Croydon situation. So again, I take a look at his votes. I think it's important that people understand leadership. Sometimes as a leader, you've got to stand alone. We took a vote here in the city about Common Core, and we voted not to fund it. We voted not to put it in place and not to use the test scores. Well, what happened? We got a letter from the state that said that if you don't do this, you're going to lose $46 million in federal funds. Well, we still took another vote, and yes, the board changed their mind. I voted to continue not to do it. And the state then sent a letter and said, if you don't change your mind, the state's going to lose $420 million. There are other states in this country that have not implemented Common Core or standardized testing. We need to do away with it. Let me ask you about 
Medicaid expansion. If governor, under your watch, this would expire. Uh, obviously, Democratic candidates for governor want to make this permanent. Would you let it? Would you let it expire and then build from the ground up, or do you think that the legislature can tweak what's already in place and uh, figure out a way to keep the forty-something thousand people uh, on the rolls still covered? Because a lot of people say this is important to keep in the drug crisis. Josh, there's forty-six thousand people that are covered by this. If we just tell them tomorrow we don't aren't going to do anything. They're going to go right back to the emergency rooms. And what does that mean to everybody else in the state of New Hampshire? That means their health care are going to go up because the hospitals are going to be charging those fees back. So let's not ever forget that. But let's find a New Hampshire solution to this problem. We don't need to throw the whole thing out, but let's find a way to fix it so that there is some personal responsibility for folks that get insured. I think that once you add personal responsibility to insurance, you have people understanding that they've got to go out and find the low cost provider. That's what's important. Shopping. It's probably the only industry that we have that doesn't have a price list to tell you what you're going to pay for something before you go and get the service. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, hey, it's talked a lot about during the uh, presidential primary as well. Um, when it comes to the to the war on drugs, because this is a, you know, the number one issue facing uh, the state, according to a lot of our polls going back uh, almost a year now. Um, what would you do differently from what we've already seen uh, that hasn't been done already? Well, on day one, I declared a state of emergency. And why would I do that? To get everybody to the table to have this conversation. A year and a half ago, I, I asked the three hospitals in Manchester to come have a conversation about the drug crisis that we had. And one of the doctors said to me, you know, Mayor, this is the first time that anybody's asked all three of us to the table at the same time to have a conversation about that. And that's good. We need to talk about it. We need to get the, the best minds at the table so that we can get everything possible that we can to fight this epidemic. It's no longer heroin, Josh. It's fentanyl. Right. And when you talk, take a look at it, we need to make sure we have recovery in place. We, make, we have to make sure that we have every facet to fight this awful situation that are tearing part, uh, families apart and tearing businesses apart. Heading into the wintertime, a lot of people thinking about their energy bills. This is something you've been talking about a lot. Uh, update us on what your plan would be as governor to try to get down some of these prices. I mean, oil is going to kill a lot of people. Well, Josh, we should have learned in 2000 when we sold Seabrook. If we'd have kept 20 percent of that power in this state, we wouldn't have the energy crisis that we have today. So I say that if Northern Pass happens, 30% of that power has to stay right here. We can't be a donor state and continue to be that donor state when it comes to energy. That has to change. And people will tell you, well, you know, we only use 9% of the energy. Well, if Eversource has come forward with a power agreement mm -hmm. and they've agreed to give 10% of that back here to the state, then I guess I'm probably not too far away from asking at 30%. But I'm the only candidate that's pushed that envelope. So you're good with Northern Pass with conditions of 30% staying yeah, here. Correct. Fair enough. All right. Uh, we talked a lot about Kristen Nunu. Obviously, two other candidates, high-profile candidates in this race. Senator Jeannie Forrester, who got the endorsement of the state's largest paper this week. And Frank Edelblue has been out there talking a lot. Why, come Election Day, do you believe and are you confident that Ted Gass is going to get a little more than everybody else? Well, because I believe that my message of experience, leadership, and the ability to run this state is starting to resonate. People have seen what I've done here in the city of Manchester, and I can tell you that most of the citizens are happy with the changes that we've made. One in education, one how we make sure that the services are applied to the folks in this great city. I think that's what people are looking at. They're done with politicians that talk and have no action. And that's not what Ted Gatsis is all about. You may not agree with me all the time, Josh, but you know where I stand. Mayor, best of luck to you moving Thank forward. You. Thanks very much. Primary day right around the corner. Thanks. Happens fast, doesn't it? And I asked for the vote on September 13th. There you go.